how to add a Stripe payment link or create a payment button so that can easily be added to your website or a link that you can send out in your newsletters or even add that to your website in your blog so people can start purchasing your product and also how you can actually create a QR code as well to the same product. So we're using Stripe. So once you've logged into Stripe, again, if you haven't already done it, make sure you've got two-factor authentication turned on. So once you've logged into Stripe, we'll do that now. So you'll be presented your normal screen. We need to go and tell Stripe what websites we're going to be putting this button on first. So if you go to the cog icon, settings, so this is in your top right at the moment. This could move, but if it does move, look for the settings. So if you go to settings, and now what we want to do is scroll down a bit. No, we don't. We want to go to checkout and payment link. Sorry, it's over here now. Now, if we scroll down, now what we want to do is tell what websites are going to put this on. So enable client only integration. Warning pop up, pop up comes. Yes, allow. Now you want to give it the, the URL, both probably with the WW and without. So I'm going to drop it onto this website. And if I stick a W, W in front of that and copy that across. So that's the domain name again. Some people might be accessing it without the W. Depending on how your server set up, it, might, it should bounce them back to one URL, but that's a different story. We're going to now save that. So those are the authorized uh, domain names that can use it. If you've got others like a blog or on, uh, you may have a media page or so, a medium page or something like that, you, you can also potentially authorize them depending on how those third party platforms work. So now we've done that, we want to go to products. So the products, if I just go back to the home, we'll work from there. So now we want to go to products and create a product we want to sell. So let me create add product. So this is in the top right. Now we want a product name. Uh, so let's say we're going to call this a book. So let's call it, oh, well, this will probably be a cross between a book and some other product. So a uh, feel good book or something like that. We'll want a bit of a description. So I don't know the actual length. Okay, there's a pull that down. There is a maximum we can put in. So we'll say that. Now we want to upload an image. Ideally, you want an image that's going to really sell your product. So we could use, if you've already got one, great. If not, a service like uh, Vista Create. Yeah, so if we go to Vista Create, and let's search for, let's say, book cover. We want a book cover. Let's go with we could customize it drop in photos and stuff like that but i'm going to say that's the cover i want i'm happy uh, i'm going to export that so once you've downloaded it you'll probably want the full fat image uh, for things like print and social media and stuff like that a smaller image which can be resized on the download for the book cover you can't go over two meg i think it's two megabytes in the upload so let's upload the image now, is it recurring? No, it's a one-off. How much is... I don't know, it's doing it. Uh, While well, that's doing it, if you are finding the video helpful, do give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more business-based videos. So is it recurring? No, it's one-off. How much is it? So it's, uh, I don't know, £21.99. You can choose the currency. So we'll leave it as GB. DBP, additional options, quantities one, yes. Uh, price description, let's see what this is about. Use for your organization and not for the customer. So if that's your standard price, fine. You may have, this was a Black Friday price or something like that. This is informational based as well, a lookup key. 
This is useful if you're going to do more so if you had loads of products and you wanted to find a group of products if you'd put a 10% discount on and you want to find them all again. ID, this is, I presume, is going to be a stock and code unit. So this could be, I'm assuming it's similar to an SKU. So I'm just going to put SKU 99.55. We'll say that's it. It's always good to use a number that represents something, um, particularly if you're selling more than one item. So it's a flat rate. We've got all of that next. And I do believe we're done. Any more options? I don't think tax. That'd be quite interesting. Get started on tax. Statement dis description. Now, if somebody's buying off you, uh, it might be your name. So I'm going to stick this on the website, Business Growth Ready. Uh, so it might be, I want to call it by that name, or I might, if it's the title, it might, I might want the book title to come up on their uh, statement. So in this case, I'm going to go Business Growth Ready Short uh, Book. So on their statement, that should uh, tell them. So you could put your website and book or whatever it is. You know, just describe how you sell your product. Oh, this is useful if you're selling seats, obviously. Seats or if it's consultations or something like that. So if you're selling it by the hour or a fixed amount. So it might be if you were doing, say, thumbnail designs for YouTube, you might be selling these in tens. The metadata is more so if you're doing uh, tracking and stuff like that. So we'll ignore that. You can add more. Uh, feature list. This is probably useful if it's uh, an item which has got, uh, I don't know, say it's like this, uh, joystick. So it might be joystick and includes uh, battery and replacement switch. So if it was the joystick and it included two or three items in there, it might be a pair of glasses, including case, including glasses, wipes or something like that. Those are the features of that product. Um, so you could say this is books, including pages. Now, only joking, obviously the book will come with pages, unless it's an ebook, but that's a different story. Uh, so let's add the product. That's doing its thing. Now the product's available to sell. Let's click on that. You can scroll down the bottom and see what we've got. So we've got the title of the um, the product, and get in this case the book's name, the image, description, uh, feature list. As I said, we've got nothing for this, but this could be batteries, glasses. If it's glasses, um, the additional things that come with the glasses. Now, uh, if it's cross sell, if you are selling items, now obviously this is more for where you've got a few items. If you've got hundreds, you're going to probably use a dedicated e-commerce. Um, platform or if it's courses uh, e-learning uh, platform but in this case if you've got a few items simple payment payment buttons are the way uh, now if you've got a cross item so if you've got additional products and say yes you've got two books in this case you want to sell the second book or you may have a bonus sheet which you've got online so it might be a pdf or something like that and you want to send them to that obviously you'll just reference that product here I've got no, uh, so in this case, it's asking me to add a product, or I could say, that's, I do web design as a profession, so I could be offering a web design. So depending on what products are available, I'll show it there. Now, what I want to do is create a payment link. So from here, if I go create payment link, this is where we can customize how it's, the, the look and feel on the link, what we can send somebody or the payment button down the road. So here, uh, do we want to collect the customer's address? Now, if we're going to send them the book, we obviously do. So we tick that on there. Do we want the billing address only or the billing and shipping? Now, we want the billing and shipping. Now we can decide if we want to limit the availability. So we can add, edit the countries, click on that, edit the countries, we want to sell so at the moment they're all selected so if you go to the top right i think there's an option to deselect all no select all it goes yeah so if i double uh select and select again it'll unselect them now i just want to sell this to canada united states and the uk so those are the three countries i'm selling to initially 
I'm going to say save. Now, ideally, you could probably do with working out what your postage is going to be. So we can add a shipping rate. Unless you're going to put a table, so you've got very, this is the type of thing you can do a lot easier on an e-commerce platform is have loads of shipping zones. You might want to come up, for want of a better word, um, ship with sugar price. So if it costs you £2.25 to ship it to the UK and it's going to cost you 2 50 for the States and 2 70 for Canada, you might come up with a price uh, like 2 65 and that covers you on uh, most of it if you just want a fixed price or you might or in finish you might go a bit over that to cover things like packaging as well so that's one thing to worth bearing in mind it's not only the cost of your shipping it's your cost of actually sending that product out with the packaging so you might want to say postage and packaging is three pound fifty oh, it looks like i've got ground set somewhere else so i'm going to x that i'm going to go uh, Post and pack, and we want. Are you going to give me a price option? Okay, great. So it's going to be three pound fifty. Five. Oh, is that going to appear here? We don't need to put that there. Five to seven. Shipping time. Five to seven days. It's going to be three pound fifty. We're going to save that. So now, if somebody buys the book, it's twenty one pounds plus three fifty. Quantity. Net customer adjust quantity. As that's worthwhile if they want to buy books so it's going to be minimum purchase of one i would have thought obviously and so we're going to do so it might be this particular method which is quite useful so if this method um where you're shipping would only allow you a certain weight you might say okay you can only ship a maximum of five books using this method it might be that you need a different shipping maybe a parcel rate or something like that um so one to five is the maximum they can buy under this method requires custom provider phone number you might want that if you so in this field we can add a custom field i would potentially add a email so if we select that it's going to be a text field uh, label name email email we can mark it as optional now we can easily garnish their email address. Ideally, you want somewhere where there's an option for them to join your mailing list. It might be that if you said company in this book is a bonus uh, PDF, which they can get elsewhere and that move them onto a mailing list. Options for uh, promotion codes. So if you have got a code, you can uh, select that box and initiate that. I'm going to say that's all. So that's what the page is going to look like initially. I'm now going to say create link. So that's a preview now what i want to do so that's the product setup now i want to actually get that code so we can stick it on a website if you wanted to send that link to somebody you've got so if i copy that you can copy that if i open a tab which i'm or a browser i'm not logged in at then let's bring edgy that's what they see. So you could send this. Obviously, the logo is already being set up when I set up the Stripe account and the payment. This would have your details on there. I can choose the quantity. So this should take me to a maximum of five. Yeah, so I'm going to have four. Total. The postage is three pound still £3.50. And that's the total. Obviously, they can put their email. Ah, email address is going to go there. Uh, so I don't need to do that. I'm going to go back and edit that out. So the email address is already being captured. Okay. And then the shipping details and the credit card as normal. So I'm going to X that. Now let's see if I can edit this button. Edit. So custom fields. I don't really need that. I'm going to turn that off. Now you can also generate a QR code. Here. That'll give you our QR code. You can uh, again copy that, put that on your social media post, so or on any print material you've got, and it would take them to this particular product. So it's the same as that direct link. So that's the link. And again, if you've got a blog post, you could write within that blog post. I mean, I'm placed my new books available. Blah blah blah. Click here to buy the book. Highlight the book and then reference or the the click here to buy or your book title reference that link now if we want the buy now button 
we need to go and find a, a snippet. Oh, it's offering, I think it's going to offer it here. Yeah, okay. So this is the snippet that you can add to your website. So you've got a different layout options here. So buy now, now or just the button. The card is quite nice. Uh, change the button text. So buy, and we could go with the title of your book. Showing the supported uh, methods of uh, payment, the different credit cards. You could go for additional styling options, things like button colors and stuff like that. So you could actually brand it in your corresponding website colors and also change fonts. Uh, round, is that going to give us a radius control under the pill? So that looks like a rounded edge. So if I'm happy with that, save and copy code. So I'm just going to open a new notepad. Bring that in here and drop that code in. So the reason why, obviously, you're authorizing the website is you don't want necessary or you don't want people else using your code and it turning on somebody else's on somebody else's website. So if I take that now, how to embed it? So I'll do two methods. So if you, if it yours was a standard HTML site, something like um, your web developer would potentially be looking at, at this. So here's my book. And then they would paste in that code there. That wouldn't be, obviously, this won't be seen unless it was, I'll give that a second. I'll go into a preview mode. This wouldn't actually be seen fully functional until it was uploaded to the web server and stuff like that. Again, this web, this page hasn't got no design uh, or anything on that, but that's how it would work. It probably wouldn't function if I uploaded it because this is not set to the, chorus, the right domain name. And if I go to the actual domain name, which has got been authorized for this button to work on, so if we go to pages, add a new page, I'll do it on this. That I need to update my own websites. That's a problem. I do website design and the uh, my website is years out of date. Uh, test book. Right. Now I want to insert HTML. So depending on how your editor is, it might be insert as text. But on this particular thing, I've got HTML block. I want to put it as an HTML block. I don't want to style anything. I'll put that there. Enter the text. Oh, sorry, that code block. That's what this is, HTML. I'm now going to publish that. Let's view the website live on the Tinter web. Not being logged in. Same thing. Let's buy the book. Because I'm not logged in, it's not prompting me. Because I'm I was obviously logged in building the button. Um, so those are the details. Put all the relevant corresponding to us, and then just pay. Now, what you can do is also set up thank you pages and cancellation pages. Thank you pages might be useful. So if in your platform you can create a thank you, and then that could take them to your mailing list. You can also put messages in when you're creating the strike button. Edit. Edit. There, I do believe there was an option to, uh, yes, there. So on this side, after payment, we can take them, as I said, to a dedicated thank you page on our own website. And that, you know, thank you, your book will be delivered in blah, blah, blah. In the meantime, drop us a, um, join our Facebook page or whatever platform you want to move them to, or join our mailing list. So show confirmation page or replace with a custom message and you can put that there. So you can have a, now that gives them access to the PDF invoice without you needing to do any extra work. Don't forget to tap subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.